Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is the mathematics of lenses, and we want to know how can the lens equation be used to solve physics word problems, and what is the magnification ratio, and how can it be used to solve physics word problems. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. The mathematical relationship between the object distance, image distance, and focal length is given by the so-called lens equation that you see here. In the equation, DO refers to the object distance and is the distance measured from the object's location to the vertical axis of the mirror. The image distance, DI, is measured from the image location to the vertical axis of the mirror. And finally, the focal length, F, is measured from the focal point to the vertical axis of the mirror. When using the equations, you need to be aware that the O, D, I, and F can have plus or minus signs. And because of that, it's useful to remember some conventions for understanding the plus minus nature of these quantities. D, O for our purposes will always be a positive value. D, I on the other hand will be a positive value for real images and a negative value for virtual images. And the focal length F will be positive for converging lenses and negative for diverging lenses. A good problem solver in physics will always read the problem carefully, reason conceptually, and have an effective problem solving strategy. Let's illustrate how that works for a Lenz equation problem by doing our first example. The first step of the problem solving strategy involves reading the problem carefully in order to look for numerical values that can be extracted from the problem and related to quantities within the Lenz equation. So here I notice that the image, I want to determine the image distance for a light bulb that's 45.0 centimeters from a converging lens that has a focal length of 15.0 centimeters. That's step one, read the problem carefully. Step two, identify the given values in the problem. I noticed that 45.0 centimeters, that was the distance from the light bulb to the lens, so that's the object distance. So I write down DO equal 45.0 centimeters. And then I notice the 15.0 centimeters, that was the focal length. So I say F equal 15.0 centimeters, and I call it positive since converging lenses have positive focal lengths. The third step involves identifying what you're looking for in terms of a symbol in one of your equations. It says determine the image distance, so I say DI equal question mark. In the fourth step, I identify my formula that I'm likely to use, the formula that has the DO, the F, and the DI in it. And so that's the Lenz equation. I write it down. In my fifth step, I'm going to substitute the given values into the equation or formula and perform proper algebra to solve for the unknown quantity, di. So I substitute 45 and 15 into the equation, and it becomes 1 over 45 plus 1 over di equal 1 over 15. Now for the algebra part. I want to solve for di, so I'm going to isolate that term by itself on the left side of the equation. To do so, I subtract 1 over 45 from both sides. The left side becomes 1 over di, and the right side becomes 1 over 15 minus 1 over 45. I pull out my calculator, and I evaluate my, my, the right side of my equation. I just do 1 divided by 15 minus 1 divided by 45. My calculator tells me that's 0.0444 repeating. Now I'm ready to finish up. I don't know di yet. I know what 1 over di is, so I'm going to take the reciprocal of the left side. That becomes di. And I have to take the reciprocal of the right side. That would be 1 divided by 0.044444 repeating. That comes out to be 22.5 centimeters, and that's my final answer. Now let's review this problem-solving strategy that was used here. First step involved reading the problem carefully. In the second step, I extracted the numerical values from the problem statement and related them to the variable symbols within the Lenz equation. In the third step, I identified the unknown variable symbol. In the fourth step, I wrote down the Lenz equation. And in the fifth and final step, I substituted given values into the Lenz equation and performed proper algebraic steps in order to solve for my unknown quantity. Here's our second of four examples. Determine the focal length of a lens that produces a virtual image that is 16.0 centimeters from the lens when the object's 28.5 centimeters from the lens. So I'm given two numerical values, and I have to relate them to the variables within my lens equation. The 28.5 centimeters is the distance from object to lens. That's DO, and for our purposes, that will always be positive. The 16 centimeters is a distance from an image to a lens, but I'm told it's a virtual image, and for virtual 
actual images, di, is a negative value. That means the image is on the object side of the lens, not on the other side where the light is going. So I equate these two numerical values to the DO and the DI. The second step is to write down what I'm looking for, and that's the focal length, F equal question mark. The next step is to write down the lens equation, and the last step involves substituting the given values into the lens equation and performing proper algebra steps. So I say 1 over 28.5 plus 1 over negative 16 equal 1 over F. Now I can use my calculator to evaluate the left side of this equation. It comes out to be negative 0.0274 and some change. That's equal to 1 over the focal length. So to find the focal length, take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. The reciprocal of negative 0.0274 blah 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 comes out to be negative 36.5 centimeters. That's my focal length. The negative indicates that this is a diverging lens. The magnification is a property of an image that describes how many times larger an image is than the object. The formula is magnification is equal to high divided by whole, where high is equal to the image height and whole is equal to the object height. A common geometric proof, not shown here, attempts to relate this ratio of heights to a ratio of distances. It yields the equation, shown here, high per whole equal negative di per dough. You have to admit, that's a pretty cool sounding equation. In fact, I have it tattooed on my left bicep. Let me show you. <coughs> Oh, sorry, my contract with the physics classroom prohibits that. When using the magnification equation with the lens equation, it's important to remember the sign conventions associated with all five variables. For our purposes, the value of do and ho will be positive values. The die, on the other hand, will be a positive value for real images that are located on the opposite side of the lens as the object, and negative for the virtual images located on the same side of the lens as the object. The high value will be negative for those real images that are inverted, and they will be positive for the virtual images that are always upright. Finally, the value of f will be positive for converging lenses and negative for diverging lenses. This is the third of four examples, and I'm given that I have a lens with a focal length of 32.0 centimeters and an image that's 6.2 centimeters tall and upright and the object's 18.8 .8 centimeters from the lens. I want to determine object height and image distance. So I begin by identifying the given values. I know f is 32.0. I know that high is 6.2 centimeters and positive since it's an upright image. And I know object distance equal 18.8 .8 centimeters. I want to identify the unknown values, which are object height, dho, and image distance, di. Now I'm going to list my two formulas that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the lens equation in the solution and the magnification equation. Now since I know the value of f and the value of dou, I should be able to use the lens equation to solve for the die value. So I substitute the known values in. I perform algebra to isolate the 1 over die term by itself on the left side. I evaluate the right side of the equation, take the reciprocal of that value, and I get the value of die to be negative 45.5757 repeating centimeters. Take a deep breath because now we're going to solve for the value of HO. So to do that, I need to use the high per ho equal negative di per dough equation. And what I know is the value of high, it was given, the value of dough, it was given, and the value of di, which I just calculated. So I'm going to take that high per ho equal negative di per dough equation and rearrange it so that it becomes an HO equal equation. To do that, I'm going to take both sides of the equation and, and, and invert it. That's legal as long as you do the same side on, thing on the left as the thing that you do on the right. Now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by high, and I end up with object height equal negative high times do per die. I know those three values. I substitute it into the equation and I solve for my value of object height. It comes out to be 2.5 centimeters. This is my fourth and final example. In this problem, I have a lens that is diverging and the focal point of the lens is 22.5 centimeters from the lens. And I have an object that happens to be a light bulb and it's 5.0 centimeters tall and placed 48.1 centimeters from the lens surface. I want to calculate image distance and image height. So what I know is the value of f. It happens to be negative since it's a diverging lens. And I know the value of whole and the value of dough. And what I'm looking to calculate is the value of di and the value of high. 
image distance, and image height. My formulas will be the Lin's equation and the magnification equation. I'm going to begin with the Lin's equation to try to solve for dye. After all, I know the value of f and the value of do. So I substitute it in and do my algebraic rearrangements, and I end up solving for the value of dye, and it comes out to be negative 15.32 and some change. Now that I know the value of dye and the value of do and ho, I should be able to calculate the value of hi using my magnification equation. I'm going to take the equation hi divided by ho equal negative di divided by do and rearrange it to become a hi equal equation. So hi equal negative ho times di per do. I take my three known values, I substitute it into this equation, and I solve for the value of hi. It comes out to be 1.6 centimeters. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are two resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a set of seven calculator pad problem sets, and here's how they work. Each problem set consists of problems, and each problem has an answer blank. You type your answer into the blank and you click the check answer button. It'll let you know if you're right or wrong. You can try the problems as many times as you wish until you get it right. But best of all, below the problem is a link to an audio file that gives you a step-by-step -step process of how to solve the problem. That makes the calculator pad a great resource for solving problems. You also have a written tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck, but mainly I wish that you do the calc pad problems because then you won't need my luck because you'll have skill. Thank you for watching.